If you haven't made fruit butter, this strawberry fruit butter is the perfect place to start. It's like preserve, it's like a jam, but it's better. It's a spreadable consistency of strawberries and you will love it. We're gonna go through each step. I'm gonna show you how to preserve it if you want to so you can make it just like this. Fruit butter is a super simple way to enjoy the best of whatever fruit it is in season and make a delicious spread out of it. So instead of a jam or a preserve, this is a fruit butter, it has no butter in it. And the differences are there is jelly that is clear and made with fruit juice. There are jams or preserves where they have pieces of the fruit and kind of a thickening with them. And then there's fruit butters, which is what we're gonna make today. And this is a strawberry fruit butter. A fruit butter uses the whole fruit and it mashes it down and lets it cook for a long time until it gets thick on its own. So you have the whole fruit in it, not just pieces, not just some of it, all the fruit with some sugar until it cooks down to the right consistency. It's really, to me, its simplest form of making and preserving anything to use as a jam or a preserve is a fruit butter. Because all you do is use very minimal ingredients, no pectin. I don't really like anyway preserves or jams or anything with pectin. I think they get too gluey and gloppy. But this one gets even thicker usually than a jam or a preserve because you just cook it down to consistency you like. So we're starting with whole beautiful fruit. This is home growing, my strawberries. That's why they're gonna look slightly smaller to you because when you grow them at home, they don't necessarily get always as big as they do in the grocery store. But you know what they do get? They get beautiful and just perfectly red all throughout. So if I cut one open, look at that. It's beautiful, rich flavor all throughout that berry. So we're gonna use these strawberries and I use, usually go by pounds. I think that's the easiest way to do it. And then you wanna add a few things to it. So it's a jam. It's not a jam, it is a jam. It's a fruit butter, you need sugar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some sugar. And what this is gonna do is one, it does actually help thicken it, but it does sweeten it too. So it uses actually overall less sugar than a lot of jam recipes would call for. We're gonna put that right in there. And then what I'm gonna do is take a lemon and I want that lemon juice. So citrus juice offers a couple things. It really helps brighten everything. So it adds a little bit of a, you know, a pop of flavor to it. But what it also does is it brings out the flavor of other things. It enhances the flavor of the strawberries because it like makes it kind of just dance on your tongue a little bit better. So citrus is to me super important when you're making any type of fruit preserve, jam, butter like this. So I'm putting in all of that juice. And then the only other thing I wanna to add to this is some vanilla bean. Now you could add just some vanilla extract too. I would do that at the end, but I just personally love vanilla bean. And these have been sitting, you know I love to make homemade vanilla. They've been sitting in some of my homemade vanilla. So I'm just gonna slice them open, let all that caviar and seed in the middle just ooze out while it's cooking. Ugh, oh, that looks so good. What we're gonna do now is just mash it. At the end, I'll most likely need to puree it a little bit, but if you mash it in the beginning, what that's gonna start doing is drawing out some of its juices, which you can see is happening right here. So I'm gonna go around and see as soon as I start mashing it, see all that juice that's collecting? It's super simple with strawberries. We're just gonna go around and mash it, and we're gonna go over and start cooking it. You don't have to get these perfectly mashed. You just want it, so you can see where it starts drawing a lot of liquid, which it has. And now what we can do is just go over and start it cooking. So what we wanna do is bring it up to a nice boil and then let it simmer for a long time. So I'm gonna show you when it comes up to a boil so you can see it, but we're gonna turn the heat on. And since I am gonna can this for shelf preservation, meaning shelf stable, I do have a water bath ready. I have jars that I'm going to sanitize and have ready, lids, everything ready to go but really you could do this and you could just put it in the fridge or freezer too if you wanted to. So we're gonna let this come up to a boil and then I'll show you. This has come up to a simmer and with any fruit butter, I always like to bring it up to a rolling boil. And if you don't know what a rolling boil is, that's when it's a boil that as any, even if you stir it, you cannot stop that boil. And see how I continue to stir, but it's just boiling still and bubbling, that's what you want. Now with any jam, you're gonna notice there's foam that appears. Most jam recipes tell you to make sure you skim that foam off you can do that. I wait till the end of the cooking because some of that actually dissipates back into the jam and I don't like to take any of it off if I don't have to until the end. So I'm gonna let this now boil. I'm gonna turn it down slightly so it's just more at a nice heavy simmer, meaning it's continuing to cook, but it's not over going anything. You don't have to put butter in it like some of the old recipes tell you either. You don't need any of that. You just need to watch it. I have it in a tall pan. And what we're gonna do now is just really condense it. We're gonna caramelize pretty much the sugars into a thicker sauce-like fruit butter. It's really a beautiful process here what happens and it's so simple. 
This has been boiling and it really doesn't take that long, but the joy of it is you can cook it down longer if you want to. But the thing is, after so long, cooking it, you cook off to me more flavor. So in the last few minutes, I did take off any foam I saw. So I just would go around, skim it off and put it right here on a plate. The whole idea is foam has air in it. And when you're canning, you don't want air in that jar. So you don't want to can it with foam. It doesn't hurt you. You can just eat this. That's fine. I do want to take out my vanilla beans because they have now just been beautifully cooking in that. So they have all of those seeds, which if you want to see the seeds and you look really closely at this, do you see all those little flecks over here? Those are seeds of vanilla. So they have all that flavor, which is what you want. And then you can actually let these dry and you could put these in sugar and they'd have like a vanilla sugar effect. Vanilla beans are wonderful. So now it's still really hot. So it seems really thin, but what we want to do is we want to blend it. Now with most fruit butters, like when I do grape butter or when I do apricot butter, I leave the skin on or the seeds in the grapes. You want to pass this through a food mill or a conical strainer and that would get out any of those grape seeds or the skin on apricots. Strawberries are wonderful and even easier because we have to do none of that. All we're going to do is blend it to make sure the fruit is one with the liquid, which creates the fruit butter. Fruit butter is called that because what you want is a spreadable consistency of room temperature butter. That's what the name comes from, which does that not just sound good? So what I'm going to do is just use my immersion blender and it's hot. So you have to be careful, of course, remember that. And I'm going to just start blending it. So it takes not too long at all. It can be a little bit messy, so you wanna be careful. But if you put it in a blender, remember anything hot, you wanna leave a vent open because hot liquid can explode in a blender and you don't want that. So I can already see the texture is gorgeous. But what I do is I had a little plate, just like a pie plate in the freezer, so it's super cold. If you wanna know your texture, cause when it's warm, nothing will give you the texture it really is. You put it on an ice cold plate and then you let that fall. And look as it's cooling at that texture. Do you notice how it is just really firm? And what we could do is even look at that. That's beautiful texture. Spreadable. That is a good fruit butter. I wasn't even going to taste it. Yeah, I usually wait till the end, but this is so good. So this is perfect. And look how I wish, I hope you can see this texture. I want you to see how beautiful this is because you have the strawberry seeds. I mean, just look at that. And once it cools, it will be that spreadable consistency. So I'm finishing up sterilizing my jars. Always check, double check with the USDA canning guide for sterilizing everything for home canning. I sterilize my jars in the boiling hot water. And yes, it's hot. And yes, I have asbestos hands as my mom and grandma would call them because I can touch hot things that I shouldn't. So I have all my jars ready. They're sterilized. I use small jam jars. You can use whatever jar size you want. You can put these in pints. It affects the time slightly on how long you water bath them for. But what's great is with fruit, butters, or jams, preserves, you don't have to worry about all the other things. So there is enough acid in the fruit with the sugar to make it super easy and safe to can, which is what I really like. I always have a small jar too, just in case there's any leftover, because you never know for sure how much you're gonna get depending on how much water content was in there. So I have a funnel. I'm gonna start by funneling in some of this gorgeous spread. I, I think there's nothing more satisfying. Like think of gifts for Christmas. Let's think ahead right now when stuff is in season, give this even as like teacher gifts. I know no one gives homemade gifts anymore, but come on. It's so good. Look at this. So I'm using the funnel because I'm a messy person. Most of us are, I think when it comes to this kind of stuff and you don't want to get it all over the jar. So I'm going to go through Fill all these and I'll start putting the re re lids and the rings on. Just about done. I have them all in jars. One I'm going to save for myself. I'm just going to put it in the fridge because I want to eat it right now. The others I'm going to actually put through here. And I always have hot water and you wipe off the rim to make sure you have no drops or anything sticky on there that could inhibit a good seal. And then I'm going to put my prepared lids and rings on. It's really simple. You could also, like I said, you could freeze this. You can just put it in the fridge. It will last a long time. So now that they're all on, you tighten them to fingertip tightness. Isn't that the most annoying thing ever? But that's what everyone, that's what all the cool kids say. Fingertip tightness. That's what my mom always said too. It just means you tighten it 
where you know you could squeeze it really hard a little bit more, but you don't want to because that can buckle the lid. So just until it's nice and tight, but not cranking your whole strength into it. So now when they're all ready, I take them over. I like to keep them on a little pan or something like this because I find it easier. And then I have my water bath. It is boiling. Anytime you have a water bath, there is a little lifter in the bottom that you can't see because it's boiling so hard, but there's a plate, a metal plate that lifts the jars off the top, off the bottom. So you can buy canners and that's what they're going to have in them. That way you don't want your glass jar sitting directly against the heat. It keeps it elevated just a little bit. So now we're going to put these in, let them boil for a little bit. It doesn't take too long and we'll be done. Once they're done, which it's a really quick water bath, you just want to take them out. I get the water off the top and then I just let them sit for usually 24 hours. They should actually, you should hear the little ping, which is music to a canner's ear if you don't know. Um, and you should hear that within the first really minutes to an hour. But then if after a few hours, one of them is not sealed. Oh, did you hear that? I don't know if you heard it on here, but it did just go ping. I love that. That I grew up canning and preserving with my mom and my grandma. So all these things just are very nostalgic too. But if it doesn't seal within eight hours or overnight, you should put it then in the fridge and just eat it. Don't count it as a safe one. After 24 hours, I check them all. I will take off the rings and make sure each of them is indented, which you can see here, like this is a lid I did not use. The middle pushes down and there's a little indent in it. So that indent should always be pressed downward, meaning the suction happened and all the air escaped and it's canned properly. And then once that's done, they can just sit on the shelf, be given as gifts. This is the best gift. It's just that it's already, you can see as this is cooling, it's still warm, but it's already becoming a little bit thicker. And that's what I love. I love that thickness. So I'm gonna grab a spoon so I can show you. Obviously, I don't need to tell you how to eat jam. Bread, croissant, whatever you love to have jam on, use this with your yogurt. Like this is the best thing. And yes, there's sugar in it. Yeah, it's a fruit butter. It's a jam. I call everything jam, by the way. If it's anything with a fruit, it's jam usually for me. But this can be good with anything and it, it has just the most beautiful consistency. You're gonna find so many different ways to use this. It's just, it's beautiful. Mm. It's the essence of strawberries. That's exactly what you want. It has full on strawberry flavor. You don't notice the lemon in there. It brings out more strawberry flavor. Obviously it's sweet, but it doesn't overpower that strawberry, which is to me really important. It enhances it. So this is gonna be delicious. Ooh, also think of this in like a jam bar or like a, ooh, a thumbprint cookie. You're gonna find uses for this. So what do I hope you do with this video? I hope you're inspired, maybe excited to try to make your own fruit butter at home because as you can see, it takes a little bit of time, but it's super simple and it's really doable. And that's the point of this is that if I can do it, you can do it. So if you found that, share the video around so someone else can see it too. Check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and all my other recipes, they all live on there for you to use time after time because that's what good food is about, sharing and reusing and giving away. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.